Hello, welcome to Entrepreneur Finance. Today we're going to go over Chapter 5, which talk about financial statements and analysis. For some students, this may be your first time encountering accounting and financial statements concepts. For others, you may have seen this in your other classes. We're going to start with the basics and then we're going to advance to how to construct these statements and also um, how to do analysis. As you can see from the learning objectives, starting with this chapter, in addition to learning the concept and applying the concept, we'll be doing also be doing a lot of hands-on work, and that, which means that we'll be creating or constructing the actual financial statements themselves, as well as computing the financial ratios. And we'll be doing this using a, a spreadsheet software. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to apply the uh, numbers that we have computed to determine the financial health of a business, which is, is the ultimate objective of creating the financial statements, is using the data to help us to manage our business better. So let's start with the basics. So the first concept that we're going to introduce is the chart of account. Uh, I want to emphasize in here that these videos are meant to be general overview of the materials. The textbook goes over the, the concepts in much more details. So the chart, and so in, for you to really get a good idea of how to create this chart of account, what the basics for that, uh, please refer to the textbook. So the chart of accounts is a set of numbers associated with an account. Account. These are the building blocks for financial statements. Every single item on every single financial statement must have a accounting number associated with it. So when you decide, for example, an item, you want to have revenue of, and you for some business, you may want to distinguish between revenue sales from credit card versus cash revenue sales. If you want to have that distinction, then in the chart of account, you must have one account for credit card sales and one account for cash sales. So any details that you want to be able to drill down, it must create your, uh, it must have its own individual account. So that's the overall concept. So, the next thing that we need to determine as an entrepreneur and a business owner is what accounting method do we use? You can choose to use a cash based accounting method or an accrual based accounting method. Um, and the uh, convention is that unless you're an extremely, extremely small business, you'll be using an accrual method. Um, so a simple example of cash based versus accrual based. Most businesses have the need to buy insurance policies. And most insurance company only bill once or twice per year. So if you use a cash-based accounting method, uh, you will record expense on the day that you make the payment. So you, you, if you look at a cash-based accounting book, you will see that the company has expenditure on insurance policy only in January, for example, if um, they pay their bill once per year. On the other hand, the business is covered by the policy throughout the entire year. So it's untrue that the, the insurance is only a one-time expense. So in the accrual method, we try to match expenses to revenue when they occur. So since the coverage of insurance is throughout the year, in an accrual method, uh, you, the insurance policy payment will be amortized over the year so that each month the company will have an insurance expense. So that's the main, even regardless of when you make the payment. So that's the main distinction between an accrual method and a cash method. Even though it is not required for small businesses, the uh, accounting professions develop a set of principles. They are called generally account accepted accounting principles or GAAP. Um, again, for small businesses, you do not have to apply GAAP in developing your financial statements. However, it's a good idea to know what they are. Again, the textbook talk about that in more details. And the reason is because if you ever choose to have your Account, your financial statements to be audited by a CPA, and there are some scenarios where you want that to happen, then the CPA would require that you follow GAAP. Uh, financial statements for a small business, financial statements does not have, do not have to be audited. However, if you want to borrow money from a bank, a lot of times the bank may say, 
I want you to give us a set of audited financial statements. And if you are seeking funding from an external source, uh, like what we talked about in, uh, in the earlier chapter, the outside investors may very well want your financial statements to be audited. So again, if you start with the, if you set up your accounting method and apply um, gap along the way, then when you need those external resources, your statements are ready to be audited. So here are the basic financial statements. We'll introduce them and we'll talk about each one in more details. Um, we'll have the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of cash flows, and then a statement that is particularly important for the uh, entrepreneur is the statement of owner's equity. Notice that there are different um, way to describe this statement. If you are a sole proprietorship, it's called a statement of owner's equity. If your company is organized as a partnership, this statement is called a statement of partner's equity. If your company is an LLC or a corporation, then this statement is called the statement of stockholder's equity. Let's take a look at the two most common financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement. So the balance sheet is a is accounting statement that lists the assets, liabilities, and equity on a specific date. And this is very important uh, because these numbers, the values that is presented in the balance sheet is only valid for that particular day. And the balance sheet is listed in order of liquidity. So liquidity on the asset side, so these are things that the company owns, Liquidity means how soon or how fast those assets can be converted into cash. So the first item on any balance sheet on the asset side is always cash because you don't need to do any conversion. Uh, and then it's, and we'll go again, we'll go over those examples in details. On the liability side, liquidity means how soon those li liability needs to be paid. So the sooner they come due, the earlier they appear on the balance sheet. The next statement is the income statement. In it, you will find revenues, costs, taxes, and then finally the bottom line, the profits. And they are over a period of time. So they are different from the balance sheet, which is on a specific day. So typically the income statement may be a monthly, quarterly, or yearly. So it will say this is the income statement from January 1st through December 31st, for example. And when you develop the, the, the income statement, there are some items that are required according to GAAP. And most businesses and also management would like to have additional items that are not um, required by GAAP. So GAAP represents the minimum requirement and you can always go above and beyond. And it is the purpose of the income statement is for management to determine the operation um, and the financial health of the firm. So uh, it is, it, you, should, you should approach it from the point of developing um, income statements and including items that is useful for the entrepreneur. So with this um, chapter, we have a spreadsheet template that goes along with it. And we're gonna take a look at this template um, as we go along. So I um, encourage you to um, pause the video and download the template so that you can follow along. So here's an example of the balance sheet. As you can see, um, here, we on the left-hand side, we have assets, and they are listed in order of liquidity. So current asset, this represents cassette, assets that will become cash within one year. And they are also listed in order of liquidity. So starting with cash, and then in, in short-term investment, accounts receivables, and money that your customers own you, inventory, and so forth. And we have also, oftentimes, we have prepaid expenses. We talk about um, prepaid insurance. So that is an example of an, of an item. Also, you can easily detect whether or not a company follows an accru accrual system or a cash system just by looking for prepaid expenses um, and also uh, liability. So on the right hand side is the liability. Accounts payable is money that you owe your supplier and wages payables are money that you owe your employees. So if you see prepaid expenses and as well as um, payables, um, this represents a company that follows the um, accrual system. 
And if you scroll down, you will see additional items. So on the left hand side, going along with assets, you will see that as you go down in order, the liquidity um, goes down as well. So you have long term investment and then you start. With, so and then when you have land building and equipment, those are harder and harder to sell or convert into cash. And then at the very bottom, you have goodwill or trademark. Um, this oftentimes, if a company is in a uh, financial distress situation, you will not be able to sell um, trademark. And goodwill is, extreme, is, is impossible to t convert into cash. So that is an example of showing how the statement, the balance sheet is ordered in terms of liquidity. Uh, similarly, on the right hand side is liabilities and money that you have to pay back uh, so start with current liability these are liabilities that you have to pay back within one year and then long-term uh, liabilities this will take longer and then owners equity you never need to pay back your owners Another thing that you notice is in the owners in the equity section, it lists the common stock and its total stockholders equity so that, that tells you that this is a corporation or an LLC and here's an example of an income statement. Uh, so you started with revenue and then um, uh, and then cost is directly related to the revenue. So cost of goods sold with this will include um, materials as well as labor and that generates gross profit. And then the next set of expenses are less directly related to sales. So this you can think of as overhead. So this, um, this expenses that is generated obviously related to the operation of the business, but is harder to attribute it to a single customer, for example. Um, Again, I want to emphasize that the textbook contains all the formulas for computing the income statement and the balance sheet, and I will not be um, uh, listing them out. It will be very helpful for you to uh, summarize those equations into a single page for your own use and have those handy as we are constructing these statements. So once again, if you are not familiar with constructing balance sheets and income statements, please refer to the textbook for the relevant formulas and then also look at the spreadsheet template in which all the formulas are already included in there to construct the balance sheet and the income statement. So again, for students who are familiar with those these two statements, um, you can just go ahead to the next assignment. For students who are not familiar with constructing balance sheet and income statement, Please uh, review the textbook and also examine the formulas that is already included in the template. I'm going to continue with a, the next financial statement. It's called the Statement of Equity. And um, it's generic, generically called Statement of Changes in Equity. Um, but there are three forms of business organization that we're going to talk about. The first is uh, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if you have a sole proprietorship, the equity is called owner's equity. And if your partnership is called partner's equity and for corporation is called stockholder's equity. For owner's equity, meaning for sole proprietorship, the equity account is relatively straightforward. You start with the beginning balance, you add any new owner equity, uh, capital that get contributed. You, subtract, you also add net income, because in a sole proprietorship, all the income belongs to the entrepreneur. And then you subtract from it any withdrawal that the owner take. So this is the, the uh, distinct from um, wages or salary that the owner takes. So as a sole proprietor, you can take money out of the business anytime you want. And those are the money that you took is considered an owner's draw. And then you have the ending balance. For partnership, it actually is exactly the same, but for partnership, you can actually get quite complicated because you are uh, you have to record the beginning balance, the contribution, and the distribution, which is income, as well as the draw for each partner. So in a partnership, uh, let's say a partnership of uh, four partners, you have to keep track of four separate accounts. Next, let's take a look at um, stockholders' equity, which are equity accounts for um, corporations. So this will include LLCs, S corporations, and C corporations. Uh, one of the uh, is 
the important distinction for uh, stocks is uh, the concept of par value versus additional pay-in capital. Par value is the value that is specified in the Articles of Incorporation. So this is a value that the founder has to decide when they first incorporate the firm. And this can be any amount. It can be zero. Zero means you have a nominal or a zero par value. Um, a lot of companies make it one cent. So again, it is not material um, what the par value is. Additional paying capital is typically the actual dollar contribution by equity holders and by angel investors or venture capital firms. So the additional uh, paying capital is the actual contribution amount minus the par value. So if your par value is zero, then that is the entire amount. Um, or if you sell the stock for $5 per share and you have a one cent par value, then your additional paying capital is $4.99 per, per share. So the base account, the stockholders equity account include par value, additional paying capital, and then each um, year or each quarter, um, you would take uh, any earnings that is not paid out as dividend is considered addition to retained earnings. And those who also get added to the stockholders equity account. So additions to retained earnings is net income minus dividend. If there is no new equity, then the par value and additional paying capital will not change. But of course, accumulated retained earnings will change because accumulated retained earnings is equal to um, um, uh, pa beginning balance of accumulated retained earnings plus additions to retained earnings. Since stockholders' equity is a little bit more complicated, let's walk through an example. Let's say you have a beginning common stock par value of $10,000. So remember, par value is specified by the Articles of Incorporation. And you also have a beginning additional paying capital of $250,000. That means to start with, the company started with total um, equity of $260,000. In addition to that, the firm has accumulated earnings um, in prior years and total accumulated retained earnings in the beginning of the year is $63,050. Assuming the firm did not issue any stock, which means that this number will remain unchanged. Um, and the firm generated $21,720 in net income and didn't pay any dividend. If the firm does not pay any dividend, that means the entire net income is retained for reinvestment, and that is called additions to retain earning. So your ending value for the stockholders' equity, since you did not issue any new stock, remember, so the par value will remain unchanged, and the additional paying capital will also remain unchanged. The additions to remain, retain earnings is net income minus dividend. So you're keeping the entire 21720 You're adding the entire amount to retain earnings. So your accumulated retain earnings will increase by this amount. So your ending accumulated retain earnings is your beginning balance plus additions to retain earnings, so 21720 And you didn't pay any dividend. So your ending accumulated retained earnings is 84,770. And the total equity value is the sum of $10,000, $250,000 and 84,770. And that equals to $344,770. So this is an example of um, a corporation or an LLC when you uh, compute the stockholders equity. In the textbook on page 112, um, the alignment is totally off and make the equations very difficult to read. So I'm posting a correction here. Um, this gives you the um, uh, easier way to read the, uh, the formula. So the ending part value is beginning part value plus part value of a new stock issue. So again, matching each item, the part value, the additional paying capital, and also retain earnings um, to each item. We will pause here um, and continue with chapter five in the next video. See you soon.